So in the last video, I showed you how to work your back panel because you need the back panel to work out where exactly the Yoshi pattern, the color work is gonna be on the front panel. By the way, all these three patterns, including Mario and Toad, are already on my Etsy store. So head over there and have a look if you're interested. After I finished the back panel, I worked out I need to do nine rows before I start a pattern. I'm gonna begin the color work in row 10. If you already know how to do single crochets, I'm gonna quickly catch you up. So I chained 80, this is the front panel, chain 80, chain one to turn, one single crochet in each stitch, and at the end of every row, chain one and turn, and begin the next row. So I kept doing that, and this is my row 10 here. Before I go any further, I need to work out from which stitch the color work starts. So we know the Yoshi pattern, the color work is 42 rows times 46 stitches. I have 80 here, so if I want my pattern to be at the center, I have to do 17 stitches of white and then 46 stitches color work 17 stitches of white so i did my first 17 stitches next you're going to open the chart we're going to begin from this corner not from here because we have patterns up there so you're going to have to frame the pattern precisely like what i'm doing now so after 17 stitches, the pattern begins, and it tells me I still have to do 8 stitches in white. So I'm going to do 7 stitches first. I'll tell you why. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. The next stitch is number 8, it's still white, so I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. If the next stitch is still white, I can finish this stitch. But if the next stitch is in a different color, I'm going to have to change color here. So I need a black color. I'm going to use it to finish this stitch. Now we're working with two colors. When I work this black yarn, I'm going to carry this white yarn with me because after 5 stitches in black, I'm going to switch back to the white yarn. So to carry a thread, you're just going to place it like this. When you work a stitch, make sure the carried yarn is above your hook. So when you work the next stitch, it's wrapped in the stitch. So that's the first black. I'm going to work five stitches in black. But I'm going to remember to change color in the fifth. And then I'm going to drop the black yarn, pick up the white yarn, and change. So you always just change color one stitch earlier. And the next I have to do, that's nine in white and uh, when I work the white yarn carry the other color that's eight stitches in white changing at the ninth one make sure the yarns don't tangle the white yarn comes from here the black comes from here And change and then nine stitches in black don't forget to carry the white yarn so I've done eight stitches in black the next stitch is still black but I'm gonna change color here drop the black yarn and use the white yarn to finish this stitch now, for the rest of the row and the beginning of the next row, we don't have any black stitches. So I don't need to carry the black yarn all the way to the end and then all the way back. I just need to leave the black yarn here. 
But when you drop a yarn and not carry it, you're going to bring it to the front. And then from the next stitch, I'm going to continue working my stitches in white. I'm beginning my next row. I'm going to work my stitches all the way up here. Okay, now I'm getting close. We can see the first black stitch is here. That would mean if you turn your work, if you turn your work back, it's here. So that's the first black stitch. And we need to change color in this stitch. So change in this stitch, drop the white yarn, and pick up the black yarn, finish this stitch. Adjust the tension, make sure it's not too tight or too loose. Then I'm going to carry the white yarn and work two stitches in black. When I insert my hook, Make sure my hook is below everything so I can wrap the threads in the stitch. Next stitch, black, but we need to change color. Drop the black yarn and use the white yarn to finish this stitch. And the next eight stitches is in white. Don't forget to carry the black yarn at the same time. That's seven stitches. Changing color in the next stitch. So use the black yarn to finish this stitch. Five in black, three in white. Changing color in the fifth stitch. Three in white. The next stitch is in black. That's the first one. Now I'm working the next stitch in black and changing color in the same stitch. I'm going to use the yellow color to finish this stitch. And then I'm going to work three stitches in yellow, but we also need to carry the other two colors as well. I'm going to carry the yellow in the next three stitches, because why not? Two. Next stitch is in black. I can drop the yellow tail and just finish this stitch. Now leave your yellow yarn to the front, right? Because we don't have any stitches in yellow in the rest of the row. I don't need to carry the yellow tail anymore. So carry the white yarn and then work the next two stitches in black. Second one. Change to white. And uh, right, I don't need to carry the black yarn anymore as well. So it's just the white. So I'm going to see you here after I finish all these stitches. Okay, so the first black stitch is on top of this one, which is right here. That means I need to change color here. change to black oops ok 
okay change to black and uh, what's next one stitch in black I need to carry the white yarn the next stitch is yellow so drop the black yarn and pick up the yellow yarn carry the other two color and finish this yellow the next stitch is in yellow make sure every thread is above your hook and work and work four stitches in yellow three and four the next the next five stitches is in black so change to black now we don't need the black yarn anymore so bring it to the front and and we need to work the black yarn oh my god work the black yarn and carry the white change color in the fifth stitch And then it's just white stitches and then two blacks here. So this one is white. The next, the next is also white. But the next stitch is black. So change here. And work two blacks and then change don't forget to bring the black yarn to the front and I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row so I finished that row and turned my work and then work my way here so I have one black stitch here. Change color the stitch before. Then work one stitch in black. Carry the white yarn and then change back to the white yarn and work four stitches in white so it's getting pretty repetitive now you should be able to continue your work by yourself so i'm going to work my stitches all the way here three black And the third one, I need to carry the other two threads and change color in the same stitch. Where is the yellow yarn? And then finish this stitch. Work three in yellow. changing at the third bring the yellow to the front right because we don't need it for the rest of the row carry the white and then work 
one stitch in black. Changing at this one to white. We don't need the black yarn anymore, so bring to the front and then finish the rest of the row in white. So I'm going to finish this row and then I'm going to work my way back and show you how to fasten off this yellow yarn. I'm going to fasten off here because we won't be needing the yellow color for three whole rounds. So I figure it's easier just to fasten off here. Okay, so the next row, the black stitch is here. Changing color in the stitch before, which is here. So it does kind of require a lot of thinking, but once you know how it works, it's actually not that difficult. So we need to carry the white and work one black. Next stitch is yellow. Carry the other two threads and work one stitch in yellow. Drop the yellow, change to black, finish this stitch. Okay. Now, how to fasten off the color that's not going to show up for a long time? You can choose to carry the color for like 5 or 10 more stitches. I used to do that, but this time I think I'm just going to cut the yarn. I should have left a little bit longer than this because I want to weave it in on the wrong side. So now you should be able to continue your work and um, when you get to here, you're just going to join the red color and then just continue working the red color in this area. Remember not to carry it too far. So I'm going to continue my work. If I come across anything that I haven't covered so far, I'm going to let you know. It turned out I do need to add something. When you're working this row, you can see that the black stitch actually appears three stitches earlier so it would be here so that's where the first black stitch appears and what we do here is drag the black yarn all the way there. And then when you're working the next stitch, carry both yarns. Like that. And this red stitch appears later. So it should be one, two, three on this one. But the thread starts from this stitch. So when I work the next stitch, I'm going to make sure to carry this red yarn. One, two, and then in the next stitch, I can change to the red yarn. And continue my work. As you're working your pattern, please don't forget to start your decrease row at some point for the armholes. 
In my case, my decrease row is supposed to begin at row 41. Because for my front panel, I did 40 rows and then begin the decrease at row 41. So I'm going to make sure the two panels match up. I actually finished the pattern and forgot to decrease here. So I ended up having to rip it and it's just a mess. So just a reminder here, please don't forget to decrease. The decrease pattern is already covered in the last video, but it's basically just a decrease row than a regular single crochet row. And on the decrease row, you're going to do a single crochet two together at the beginning and at the end of the row. When I finish the last stitch in green, I'm going to cut this yarn. And then continue my work in these two colors. So I finished the pattern and from here, I'm just going to work in white yarn and keep decreasing on both sides. Just like the front panel, I'm going to have to decrease for 20 rows here. So I've already decreased. This should be 11 rows. I should keep decreasing for another 9 rows. That is a total of 20 rows of decrease. So after the decrease, now I have 60 stitches. I'm going to mark out the center stitches. This is where the v-neck begins. So from the next row, I'm going to stop decreasing. I'm just going to work one single crochet in each stitch till here. So this edge of the v-neck is exactly the same as this one. I'm just going to quickly go through what's going on here because I've already showed you in the last video. So I'm going to make a single crochet two together in the next stitch. Chain one and turn. And then one single crochet in each stitch all the way to the end of the row. Finish the second row. And then when I turn my work and work in this direction, I'm going to work a single crochet two together again in the last two stitches. And then I'm going to chain one and turn work one single crochet in each stitch. So you're just going to keep repeating these two rows and I'm going to keep working like this for a total of 30 rows. And then I'm going to chain one, pull yarn through, and leave a long tail so later we can join the two panels at the shoulder seam. For the other shoulder, I'm going to join the yarn here and work the first row in this direction. So in the marked stitch, I'm going to join the yarn like this. Then I'm going to yarn over insert my hook in this stitch and pull up a loop insert my hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop work a single crochet two together then i'm going to work one single crochet in each stitch at the end of the row chain one and turn again work one single crochet in each stitch all the way here then chain one and turn when you begin your third row, work a single crochet two together in the first two stitches, and then one single crochet in each stitch. So on this shoulder, we end the row with a single crochet two together, and on this side, we're going to begin the row with a single crochet two together. So I'm going to work 30 rows in total for this shoulder, and then I'm going to join the front panel and the back panel together at the shoulder seam and also on the sides of the panel as well. When you join the shoulder seam, make sure the stitches line up. I have 15 stitches for the front panel, so I'm going to count out 15 for the back panel and then join them together. And you're going to do that from the wrong side. If you don't know how to join seams yet, just click this video here. I'm going to be using the second method in this video. 
So I've joined the shoulders. This is the center back of the vest. I'm going to first show you how to do the neckline. And then once you know how to do that, this ribbing here and the one at the bottom are the same. So first I'm going to find the center stitch. I obviously have two, but I'm just going to insert in the left one. And then I'm going to grab the green yarn, attach it here. We're doing this from the right side of the vest, by the way. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the stitch, pull up a loop, and make a single crochet. Then I'm going to single crochet along this edge. I'm going to carry this tail so I don't have to rip it in later. Around this corner, I'm going to make a single crochet two together in the last stitch and this side stitch. So these are two rows. For every two single crochet rows, I'm going to work two single crochets along the edge. I'm just going to find somewhere to insert my hook and then pull up a loop and make a single crochet two together. And then I'm going to follow that rule. For every two single crochet rows, work two single crochets here. These are not normal stitches, so you're just going to find a pattern that works, but you're going to roughly do two single crochets for every two single crochet rows. So I want to get to this corner. I'm going to work a single crochet four together. So that's just me. I'm going to grab one loop from the center two stitches and the two stitches that are worked in the center two stitches. So in the side stitch, I'm going to grab one loop. In the center two stitches, one loop from each stitch. In this stitch on the side, grab one more loop. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through all. And then for this edge is the same, two single crochets for every two single crochet rows. At this corner, do a single crochet two together again in this and this stitch. And then I'm going to see you back here. So we've crocheted around the neckline. This is just to build a foundation for the ribbing. If we work the ribbing directly, it's not going to look this neat. So anyway, we just need to do one round and then I'm going to slip stitch in the first stitch. And chain one. Fasten off here. Because we're going to begin the ribbing from here. So I'm going to attach my yarn here. And then I'm going to make a chain. This chain is the width of the ribbing. This one right here. So I think five chains is enough for me. So after you've chained however long you want your ribbing to be, chain one to turn. Then I'm going to, in the second stitch from the hook, insert my hook and make a single crochet. So I'm just going to single crochet along this chain.
That means I would have five single crochets. And then after this row, I'm going to attach it to the next stitch with a slip stitch. Then slip stitch in the next stitch. So we move forward one stitch. This is like the chain one for the second row. So I'm going to turn my work. And from the first single crochet, insert my hook in the back loop of that stitch and make a single crochet. Back loop of the next stitch, single crochet. I'm going to have to do five single crochets in total. Okay, so that's five single crochets. At the end of this row, I'm going to chain one and turn again. From the first stitch, one single crochet in the back loop of each stitch again. Then slip stitch in the next stitch to attach this row. Slip stitch in the next stitch to begin the next row. Turn your work and one single crochet in the back loop of every stitch. So you're just going to keep repeating this, keep working your single crochet rows back and forth. When you get to this end, chain one and turn. When you get to this end, slip stitch in the next stitch and then in the next stitch as well. So I'm going to keep working this ribbing around the neckline. There's no decrease, just keep doing this along the edge. And I'm going to repeat that all the way here to my last stitch slip stitch in the last stitch to finish this row and then i'm going to chain one leave a tail so I can sew this edge to here. So you're going to attach this one here and this one here. Like this. And then you're going to do the same for the ribbing here and here, except there's no decrease like these ones. For the armhole, join at the underarm and then work single crochets around it. Two single crochets for every two rows. And then when you're back here, make a chain to start the ribbing like this one and do the same here as well. When you finish all that, we pin all the ends, then the vest is done.